Hello, uh, this is Mr. McAllen one more time, and uh, I'm working on page three now. And I'm hoping that this will be um, under 10 minutes for you, but this is on page three and of the multiple choice section. And uh, the first question here on page three says to use synthetic division to find the quotient and the remainder. So, okay, so we're gonna set up synthetic division. Remember that if we have a factor of x plus two, that means our zero that we're using synthetic will be x equals negative two. So I'm gonna just write out um, the coefficient um, line for the synthetic division. And um, notice I made a mistake here because I have, um, I have to put a zero there because we don't have an x term. No coefficient for x. So what we need to do is make sure we include the zero, put your um, your root value here and synthetically divide. And if it happens to have, um, if we happen to have uh, perfect division and no remainder, then uh, this would be a root. But whatever our remainder is would be what the function would be equal to when we plug in negative two. So I'm gonna um, bring down that one, multiply it by negative two, and I get negative two. This will make negative three. Then I'll make six. When I add them, I get six. And then this makes negative 12, giving me negative eight for the remainder of the function. So if I were to plug in to uh, the polynomial, um, uh, if I were to plug into the poly this polynomial negative two, it would give me a quotient function of one x squared minus three x plus six. So that would be, um, choice B, and notice my remainder is negative eight. So remember, when you do synthetic division, you start out, in this case, we start out with a fourth degree, I'm sorry, a third degree. The division yielded a second order degree, and the remainder. Okay? Um, on the next problem, it says to find a polynomial which has these three zeros. So we convert the zeros into factors. So I have x minus minus one, we have x minus two, and we have x minus four. Now this is gonna require some work to get it into uh, foiled form. So I'm just gonna pause the camera while I do that. x plus one, x minus two, x minus four, and I'm gonna work on that on a piece of scrap paper, and then I'll write out the answer, or show the work in a couple minutes. Okay, so I did the first set of foiling, where I foiled the first two terms, and I got this trinomial, and now when I want to foil against the third term, remember, you just have to be systematic about this. Everything in the first trinomials can get multiplied by x, so it'll be x cubed, minus x squared minus 2x, and then everything is also gonna get multiplied by negative four. So I'm gonna have negative four x squared, and notice I'm lining up the terms. I have plus four x, and the last part is I have plus eight. So when I add these together, I get x cubed minus five x squared plus two x plus eight, and I'll just look through and see if that matches up with any of my answers. And it looks like D is the answer for this one. So that would be D, and this last one was B. So let me pause it, and I'll just make some space and regroup, and I'll be right back. The next problem asks uh, for the rational possible rational roots. And notice we have eight, and we have two as our P and our Q values. So remember, rational roots deal with the factors of negative eight divided by the factors of, I'm sorry, factors of plus or minus eight over the factors of plus or minus two. So our possible rational roots are gonna be plus or minus one and eight, two and four, all over the possible rational roots for, I'm sorry, the factors of one and two. So when we write these all out, we have one divided by, one divided by one, two divided by one, four divided by one, eight divided by one. So you got one, two, four, and eight. And now we take all those numbers and divide it by two. And so we'll have 
1 half, 1 divided by 2, 2 divided by 2, 4 divided by 2, and 8 divided by 2, which uh, three of those four numbers are repeats of what we already had. So these are all of our possible rational roots right here. We have five of them. We have um, 1, 2, 4, and 8, and 1 half, and that would be choice C. Now looking forward to the next problem, we have a, I'm going to just erase what we just did. So we have some more room to work. And we have to simplify this. So remember our power of power rules means that everything gets cubed. So 4 cubed, uh, p to the negative 12, v to the ninth. Now on the bottom I have s to the negative 12th. So now using my negative powers I switch their location. So the first thing is 64. S comes up to the top as s to the 12th. V to the ninth stays. And then you have s to the 12th on the bottom. So that would be uh, choice. Oh, I think I made a mistake. This should be a p. So I've got p to the 12th on the top. No, oh, that's sorry. My bad. That's um. I totally messed this up. I got to just make sure I look over here. P should be in the bottom and S should be in the top. So I got 64, P in the bottom, S in the top, choice B. Just be careful when you do that, especially working in confined spaces like this. The next one says that I'm just going to rewrite this as 2. Um, this will be 2 to the negative second x to the negative sixth, y to the sixth, because I'm multiplying every power by negative two. The bottom's going to be x to the tenth, and then I'm going to have y to the negative eighth. So now I can, I, um, anything with a negative power changes location. So on the bottom, we're going to have two squared, x to the tenth, um, x to the, oh, x to the 6th is coming down, and then my y to the 8th is going up, and I have y to the 6th up there as well, and I'm going to simplify powers now, and I'll have um, y to the 14th um, for x to the 16th, so hopefully that matches, and there it is, choice A. Oh, no, that's not choice A, it's choice D the coefficient didn't match. The next one has a half power, that means square root. Well, half power, square root for numbers, but you take the half power of the powers, so I've got x to the fourth, and then I'll have 49, which will, that'll become seven, because half is a square root, and then y to the negative eighth. So I'll just rearrange terms, I have x to the fourth over seven, y to the eighth on the top and that would be choice D. And the last problem for this page, well that went quick, um, fractional power 64 to the two-thirds. Remember uh, the denominator means root type and the top means power, power over root. So I'm going to first take care of the root and this equals um, this, the cube root of 64 is 4, so I've still got to square it because I didn't take care of the power yet, and that gives me 16, and that's choice A. Hopefully you found this of some help for page 3, and I'll be working on page 4, 5, and 6 um, for tomorrow. So I'll post these videos, and the rest of it will be posted shortly. Take care, have a good night.